Hey, Miles here, milesbeckler.com. In this video, you're gonna learn all of the bits and pieces inside of my kind of home audio studio so you can know exactly how to get pro level audio quality from home. And this applies to you whether you're doing just audio based products, you sell MP3s, you're doing your own recordings at home, or if you're building out a podcast studio in your house to take that podcast kind of audio quality to the next level. You know, my wife and I have been digital nomads for many years, so we've had uh, a wide variety of recording spaces. We often defaulted to walk-in closets with clothes hanging everywhere. It did a pretty good job, but as we knew we wanted to relocate and get a new place and kind of start over, we knew we wanted a dedicated audio space. This video is gonna be part one in a series. I ultimately wanna show you the rest of my main office where we'll talk about the video stuff because Great videos are really audio, lighting, and video. There's three components to it, but to make it digestible, I wanted to break it down and focus on the audio only. So we're gonna talk about everything we use here in our audio studio. I'll also kind of let you know how or what adaptations you need if you wanna bring a laptop into the mix because when we record in here, we don't use a laptop and it's all gonna make sense soon. We're gonna start with the tech devices from the microphone and work all the way back to the recording. And then we'll talk about the acoustical treatments in this room to really kind of make sure we're getting the best quality sound we can. Now, it's very difficult, and I would go as far as saying impossible, to improve the sound quality of a rubbish recording. So the moment of recording, the device you're using to obtain that vocal wave frequency is the most important step in the process. If your microphone sucks, then the recording is going to suck and there's nothing you can do on the computers to make it better. Some people might be able to tweak it a little bit. I'm not that smart. And ultimately, you got to start with a quality recording device. We're using the Shure S. M7B broadcast microphone. Sure is an internationally recognized brand. They rock stars have been using the Sure. I believe it's a, the SM58 microphone. Um, man, Green Day, like all those bands I used to go watch in Berkeley and San Francisco back in the day, no effects. They all rocked Sure microphones. Um, this is the same microphone that Joe Rogan uses, the most download podcast in the world. And honestly, this is stuff you'll find inside of broadcast, uh, like actual like radio studios and broadcasts. This is a broadcast level microphone. This is not a hipster fancy podcaster microphone, but it's the best microphone for podcasting and for audio recording. You're going to get a really, really rich sound. Now, this is hooked to what's called a boom stand. You can kind of see it here. Sorry, we'll get into the black kind of behind me here. And it allows the microphone to move in many different orientations. And that allows us to get it positioned right where we want it. And obviously, we're going for enough distance to where we're not popping our peas with plosives and this microphone picks up a, a just a really broad sound so it doesn't need to be super close and it gives us a little bit of uh, freedom inside of this room then the next item in the line is what's called the cloud lifter and it's this little box and what the cloud lifter does is it actually boosts the signal now this thing does not have its own power it's simply plugged into the two microphone cables which are xlr cables everything runs on xlr i'll talk about that a little bit more in a second um, the cloud lifter so this microphone is known to be a little bit weak and you don't want to have to bump up your gain in post-production because you can get a hiss noise this device increases the sound signal to the next leg and it does so without adding any kind of weird sounds, any hissing, any white noise in the background. Um, I, I read that some people were like, you don't need it, you do need it, I got it, I'm so thankful that I got it. And this is the exact, exact match stuff we're using in my, in my office as well. We duplicate it out for this room so I don't have to carry it back and forth. So the cloud lifter is the next one. Um, and by the way, all a link to everything is gonna be down below. I'll even have a link pop up up here in the corner for you. So you can click that, it'll open a new tab. And I've got it all itemized to the exact items for you because there's some different makes and models, et cetera. So from the cloud lifter, the next question of where it goes depends on whether you're going to record to your laptop directly or to a recording device. Now in my home office, in the office where I do my videos, I'm recording directly into my laptop. My laptop is the item that kind of 
puts the actual waveform together and creates the file for me. The reason I do that in there is because I've got the video element involved and my laptop just stitches them together seamlessly very, very easily for me. The reason we don't use a laptop in here for our professional level recordings is I don't want the fan noise from a laptop being on to potentially kick on because the microphone would pick up that sound. So for my videos, I don't care, but for our professional level stuff that we sell, we eliminate that. So part one, we're gonna look at how this plugs into a laptop. I got this device, it's made by Focusrite. It's the Scarlett SI2, S2i2. Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. It's the newer generation. It has two XLR inputs here. There is one that has only one XLR input. This would allow me to hook up both microphones to my laptop to with my video so I could actually do a live recording podcast where we're both using these production level microphones. I haven't done that yet, but I wanted to buy the device that gave me that ability if that's something I do in the future. And this is an audio input device. It brings it out to a USB. So that's what this thing does, is it essentially converts the waveform that we get from our microphone that gets lifted with the cloud lifter through the RCA cables. The RCA is plugged into here, and it goes into my laptop through USB. If you're doing podcasting straight into your laptop, you're using something like um, just an audio recording studio uh, or an audio recording software built in, whether it's GarageBand or um, Mixcraft has one as well. Um, Audacity is a free one. This is the device you need to get that into your computer. Now, if you're going and you want to just record to a device, we got what's called, it's a mixer is the next step that it goes to. This is the Rolls Mini Mix 2. It's tiny, I like tiny, I don't like big things, I don't feel the need for a rack in here. And it's a one channel mixer. So the one XLR cable comes in here, and then I have an output here on the front that's a line out. And then when I don't use my laptop, we have a recording device. This is a digital recording device. It's a Roland um, R05. I bought this a couple of years ago, actually, for, uh, I think the price has come down on these things. I've paid about three, 350 bucks. Um, so when we travel, this is what we record into. So when we create all of our MP3s that we sell, it records onto here, and then you just plug it in as a USB uh, connected to the computer, pull it off, do all your post-production, everything you want in there. So that's how it comes out. We either get it to an MP or a WAV file on this here, move it to our computer, or I use the focus right directly, and then it comes out USB, and I pull it into my computer in real time. Um, so when I'm doing my live broadcasts, the focus right is what's managing the audio from my microphone to broadcast it out to YouTube. That's the gadgetry involved in it here. That's the pro level stuff. I believe, I don't think the gadgetry was even a $1,000. Um, it's very easy at the pro level, like the real pro level, to spend tens of thousands of dollars on this stuff. So to me, that's the budget level. Um, if you want even more budget, be sure to check out my travel-friendly video gear. That's what I'm using right now to record this. Since I'm illustrating this pro level stuff, I'm not using it. I'm using my, my extra budget stuff that's like 100 to $150 to get going. Uh, but this is for people who want to take it to the next level, and they know they're serious. They got their podcast going. They really want to up the level. The, the next and last thing, we're going to talk about in this video is what's called acoustical treatments to the room. Now, this room is off of the main bedroom, and it is the size of a small walk-in closet. I assume it's about 12, 10 feet wide this way and about 8 feet wide this way, and it's got a couple of weird angles and some shelving built in here. So one of the challenges uh, is reverberation. And a lot of us call it echo. Technically, it's reverberation. It's those flat walls. It's all the flat surfaces. Even this tabletop's quite flat. And I do adjust this when I'm recording. And the sound waves bounce off, and it picks up a little echo and, or reverb, actually, technically. And it just doesn't sound that quality. So I went on an absolute mission to figure out how to remove that kind of uh, reverberation from the audio. I tested a lot of different things to come up with what I'm using in here. So first, I wanna mention these sound blankets in the back. So I've hung these sound blankets and they are specifically built for the job of deadening high-end sounds, the, the treble, the, the, uh, the high-pitch sounds. They catch them. Now I've hung them from the ceiling and I've essentially wrapped the room. I got three of them in here. Now I purchased multiple brands of these from multiple companies because there's some audio specific companies selling blankets that are super expensive and these are you've got to use these ones then there's some people saying you can use basic moving blankets like that you would get from your local u-haul store um, 
so the moving blankets are a little too thin and they're shiny on the surface. And what that means is when they're shiny and they're lightweight is they're actually reflecting a lot of the sound. Now these ones that I've gone with are extremely heavy. They're like 10 pound blankets each and they've got little eyelet hooks. So it's really easy to put in some little hooks and hang them up. I remove mine in my office. I hang them and remove them every time I'm recording a video to let in natural, natural light when I'm not recording. These were fantastic. The ones I found on Amazon ended up being about $50 each. The super pro level ones were like hundreds of dollars each. It was actually quite ridiculous. Um, there were some other ones for 40 bucks and even less expensive that I've got. I'm still using them, but I, these ones for the money are the absolute best quality out there. Again, the link's gonna be, uh, when you follow that link, it'll take it to a blog post and I'll have everything itemized. Um, highly recommend that specific blanket. Um, I, if you really, really, really are on a super tight budget and you can't do three or four $50 blankets, um, moving blankets, cheaper moving blankets would be an option that you could go with. It would be better than just having the reflective walls, but um, I really think it's worth investing to the next level. One other thing when you hang those, um, it's really important not to hang it against the wall. There's about a six inch gap behind this. So there's space, there's a little air catch back there. And what happens is the sound waves hit the blanket, then they have a little trap of air behind that, they bounce off the wall behind it, they hit the air gap again, and that effectively kills that sound wave so it doesn't make it all the way back into the microphone. Keeps it nice and quiet. Then for the shapes in the room that aren't easy to cover with a blanket, I got these super simple foam acoustic um, treatments and I've just put them all over the cabinetry and the little sections of walls that don't fit right. Um, I ripped one off, so I gotta get it back on. I just use 3M command strips to hang them. Uh, it just sticks on the back, sticks on the wall, you can move them around. And then the last piece on the acoustic treatment is what's called a base trap. And this is an interesting shape. It's designed to go in all of the 90 degree nooks and corners to catch the lower kind of sound waves. That lower base gets caught in these. So below my cabinets, along the sides of my cabinets, the above in the ceiling, um, where the wall meets the ceiling, I've got a window right here. You might've seen the lighting change a little bit. Um, in that little window area, we've got these. So anywhere there's a 90 degree angle that the bass sound bounces in and out of, um, I bought, man, I bought a bunch of these things. They come super compressed. You open them up and let them swell up for a, a day. And again, 3M strips to put these in. So effectively in this room, um, I even have a few of these. I line these up on this uh, table when we're recording. So the microphone's here and there's actually a line of these to, to eliminate this shiny table. And effectively, this entire room, carpet on the floor, the ceiling is still exposed, but pretty much every single surface is covered with something in here. Um, and that is, you know, our goal. We're, our, our business is to create the most professional audio MP3 meditations we can. This is the level that we took it. Um, for podcasting, if you want an incredible sound, I listen to some podcasts that are actually really high ranked. God, the echo, it just, it kills me, right? I think like if you're really truly putting out a, a podcast, be real, uh, take, take the time to create a dedicated space. It may very well be a closet you can do. You, the smaller the space, the easier it is to kind of work and and manage the acoustical treatments, right? Like I needed three eight foot by eight foot, I think they're eight by eight or eight by 10 uh, blankets in here. If I was in a smaller um, closet, I might've been able to get away with two of them. Uh, so closets are great. And if you got a bunch of clothes hanging in there, that could work, but obviously that doesn't really work for video because you got clothes hanging everywhere. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I really wanted to just lay it all out on the line. Everything that we're using, Personally, for me, the Miles Beckler brand, I'm all on this focus, right? I'm all on running everything through a USB. I don't mind having my potential fan running on my laptop because I need to run the audio video together, hence me needing it to run an audio interface that does go to MP3. And that said, if you're recording something that is just, you're selling the MP3, you're doing vocals, you're, you're literally like doing music or something, you would run through a mixer and you would you pull out to some sort of digital audio recorder. Um, you may already have one or that Roland has been an absolute uh, badass for us. We've taken this thing to... Pfft, 20 countries this thing has traveled uh you know hundreds of thousands of miles and it's dealt with a lot of um the travel bumps and and you know throwing in backpacks and, and carry around with us and it still is absolutely right there with us every day helping us do our business um 
that's it. That's what I've got. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what I went with. Um, oh, one more thing I didn't mention, XLR cables. It's a specific type of cable for professional level audio. It's a three pin. You need two of them in order to go with this setup because one of them goes between the mic and the cloud lifter. And the other one goes between the cloud lifter and either the amp or the audio input device. Um, when you buy cables, last note, sorry for keeping you here, but get good cables. If you get poor quality cables, you can actually add noise into the line from a rubbish cable. Um, just, you know, it's, you're spending a lot on the microphone, you know, a couple hundred here, a hundred there. And you, you look at the cables, and you're like, man, am I really gonna pay 20 bucks for a cable? Uh, or there's a $6 cable. Oof. Like sometimes those $6 cables will give you that little hiss in your line and it'll just mess with everything and, and just don't skimp on that last step. So we got, um, good cables. I'll link to the exact cables that we got. So you know, which ones I've got. Um, cause this setup has brought our quality to an absolute new level, uh, both here in our main business and in my home office. Uh, I'm going to do an update in the office about lighting. That'll be one of the next ones I do, and then maybe set design or something like that. And again, I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to connecting with you on the new next video. If you know anybody building out a podcast studio or trying to do a better quality recording, feel free to grab this URL and send it out to them. Send them an email, embed it to your blog post on audio stuff. I don't care. Do what you do, share, engage. I appreciate all the engagement. I appreciate your time. Hashtag badass. If you made it to the end. Good job on you. And uh, I look forward to hearing some of your audio that you're creating in your little home studio. Uh, it's a fun process. And hopefully I wasted several hundred dollars, if not a thousand dollars on things that didn't work. Uh, and I figured I'd just refine down here for you what does work for us in a, in a major way. Really easy once you get it all set up. Thanks again for watching. I'm Miles Beckler, milesbeckler.com, and I'll catch you on the next video. Till then, be well.